sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Amy. Heyo. And we have Stuart. I am Dropbox, you must never leave. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart is referencing the fact that I was just trying to shut down Dropbox to get a little bit more bandwidth, and it was like, no, I refuse, you will go nowhere. I will stay open and chew up all your bandwidth. Have fun with your live podcast when you cannot use the internet. <laughs> and I'm like, nope. Task manager, goodbye. <laughs> anyway, on tonight's podcast, we have Star Trek Renegades. It came out this week, we watched it, and we're going to give some feedback. And we've also got the season finales for Humans, Killjoys, and Dark Matter. Dark Matter. <laughs> um, not all of us have seen Falling Skies, so we'll, we'll do that one next week. Uh, oh, I've seen it. <laughs> uh, well, I, I haven't yet, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of how it works. Not... If I've seen it, we cover it. If I haven't seen it, we don't cover it. That's simple. Fair enough. So um, it's not just me this week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, only because it Slackers. only because it came out like a couple of hours ago, Today. and I just got home from work. Yeah. So it's getting a chance to watch it. I just haven't had it. Anyway, um, let's start off with Star Trek Renegades. So I think the most appropriate person to hand the microphone over to at this point is our resident Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> How ironic. What did you think of it, Stuart? Um, Actually, wait, wait, but before we do that, first let's give a really quick rundown of what Star Trek Renegades is. Um, it's set, I think it's three years after the end of Voyager. Voyager, yeah. And it's this, this alien race is blowing up planets using what looks like the mirror technology from the original series. Is that right? No. Some mirror, uh, some mirror portal thing. Looks like yeah, it's some, it's some, it's really weird. <laughs> it sort of looks like the obelisk from um, Stargate SG One, when the episodes where they meet Merlin and the Stargate dials and it beams them through. It reminded yeah. me a lot of that. So anyway, mm. if, they, if you've only got one of them, it blows up the planet. But if you've got two of them, it doesn't, um, or some wibbly wobbly crap like that. And so this, these aliens are going around blowing up all the deuterium um, mines to make it harder for the Federation to have deuterium alloy because they blame them for some catastrophe that happened they could. forever ago. Um, and, yeah, that's the basic concept. So Yeah. I quite enjoyed Renegades, actually. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I seem to be liking a lot of... Like, I, I grew up with Star Wars and stuff, but I always did watch a bit of Star Trek, but I love the fan-made stuff with Star Trek. It's incredible what people can come up with. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine a Star Wars fan movie remotely closer like this that Disney wouldn't set on fire the split second it was sort of conceived? They have. I have seen a couple of fan films that aren't too bad. Um, one of them... Uh, they're not in pure English. One of the, the closest one was English was Swedish, but it wasn't too bad. Like, it wasn't unbearably horrible. Yeah, but did that happen before or after Disney bought Star Wars? No, no, this is this is this is this is Walt Disney's own Star Wars. Okay, it's not too bad. It's actually um, the the the, the uh, base of the story is. Why am I talking about Star Wars? When I'm talking about Star Trek. Let's go back to Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> really, really quick. Um, in the chat we have Dragon who has said Star Wars, Star Trek crossover, what would that be like? I'll give you a hint. Uh, in Next in, in next Gen, it was quote, credited as saying, Captain, they're firing lasers at us, and like, it won't get past my deflector shield. So, yeah. About as, about yeah, as well they, as that. They, yeah, beam, beam a torpedo onto the bridge, problem solved. Basically, the Stormtroopers would fire, and the Red Shirts would still die. Yeah, the Stormtroopers would fire, they would miss everything. The, the Red Shirts would die. Reasoning, Play heart attacks. Simple. Just, 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 they're scared. They, they die from scaredness. I noticed actually. I know something really funny with next gens. Yeah. 
<laughs> is that it seems to be all the yellow shirts dying. Yeah, that's because they, they flip the colours between security yeah. and captain. Just says like, haha, you can't make the red shirt jokes because that's the captain. Yeah, so I was like, oh. So, yeah. Anyway. Like, that's going to stop us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Renegades. I really like the addition of the old characters. Yeah, um, Admiral Chekhov and um, Tuvok. Yeah. Now, admittedly, Chekhov would be at least 190-12 at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, it's sort of the fact that Walter's aged as far as he has does definitely make it more sort of playable. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's really cool that um that Walter reprised his role for this. Yeah. Really, really cool. And um, Tuvok replies to his role as well, which was really cool. Yeah, Tim, and he also directs it as well. Yeah, notice that in the credits. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was really good. And now, admittedly, it is a fan film, so you can't expect... Uh, Amazingness. Yeah, you can't you can't expect a Hollywood studio quality stuff out of a fan film. Very very few fan films are meant to pull that off. But for what they had, this is actually really really good. Apart from the start, the parts that sort of made me think, oh look at Stargate, look at Stargate, <laughs> <laughs> oh look at Stargate, oh look at Stargate, close yeah. close the iris. Oh look at that, it didn't blow up. Problem solved. <laughs> oh, what they didn't let me the card at so, it. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm on the I'm on the um the YouTube page. And apparently, a lot of people don't like it. Yeah, um, I I think a lot of people had their ex- expectations set way really? too high. Too high. Um, yeah, and I had it set in the middle because you can ne- you can never tell either, either when it comes to fanfics, it goes really well or just flops. Yeah, and th- this one, like I said, I, I I've just like with Inner Dimension when we reviewed that. You've got to put the show in the context of the medium it's on and the budget it has. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't actually... Look up the budget of what um, Renegades had, how much money was given to the Kickstarters. I can't remember. But for what it had and the, the actors they had in it, for the most part, they were pretty good. Um, it's, it's a little bit sort of clunky here and there, but I'm interested to see where they go with it because they left the ending open to sort of continue the series. Uh. And it was meant to be sort of a TV pilot sort of idea, sort of a this is a concept for a new TV show that's set after Voyager. Um, these guys are on a crew of a ship. Um, Jonas Quinn was there. I was trying to think of the actor's name. Can't think of his name. Jonas Quinn from Stargate SG-1. That guy is the captain of the Starship, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, Maybe that's why Stargate was going, I'm here, I'm here, I'm yeah. here. Ch- ch- chasing them around the, the, the place. Um yeah, it was, it was definitely enjoyable. Once you, oh yeah, cool. once you take, like I said, you got to take the medium into context. You can't expect feature film quality from a fan film, people. Why is that so hard to understand? Because people want good Star Trek. Yeah, especially after being because a lot of people got burned because a lot of people don't like the modern day ones. Yeah, well, but see, a lot of fans were brought into Star Trek through the modern day ones, so you can't just hate them generically. Oh okay, yeah, I'm on the Kickstarter page. Yep. For Star, uh, Star Trek Renegades, I got to two hundred forty-two thousand four hundred eighty-three dollars. Wow, that's actually that is a, a not, okay budget. No, that's actually not as much as I expected. Okay. Yeah, no, it was, just, it, was a, it was a small budget. Yeah, I expected at least triple that. No, no, it was, it, I got a small budget, yeah. so I think that's why a lot of people aren't happy with it as well. Yeah. Uh, Admittedly, some of the sets were a bit cheesy, but again, it's Star Trek. Seriously, watch the original series. If you don't think <laughs> cheesy, sh- cheesy sets is part of Star Trek, watch the original series. Just I thought cheese came with it. Pretty much, yeah. That's, oh, yes. That's why half of them wear yellow shirts. They're edible. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I <laughs> quite enjoyed it. Like As I said, I've really been enjoying a lot of fan stuff, so no. hopefully... like. I just, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to judge because I, I didn't grow up on Star Trek. I came into it later on in my life, so. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we need we need, right, we need a resident Star Trek person around, but he's not here. Yeah, Scarecrow is currently disappeared, hiding somewhere. I'm not sure where. He he went and got Charos. Uh, really. He got free ones for his birthday. That's actually a fair point. So anyway, I'll, I'll still blame him for not being here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so overall, out of ten, fact, factoring in the budget, I would give it at least a seven. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, seven, seven, eight. It, like it was really good. Yeah. I really, was, really enjoyed it. I can, I can watch it over and over. Yeah, exactly. I actually got um, thanks to a friendly web page which will go unnamed. Um, I'm sure you can <laughs> Google it quite easily. I got a 1080p version down off YouTube. So. <laughs> I see. So yeah, so I was watching that on the sixty-inch TV. So that was pretty cool. It's just because I I wanted to get it down and wanted to be able to watch it um, that afternoon after work, and I was at work at the time when it came out. So yeah, and I didn't want to have to buffer ten eighty p movie. It was just going to take too bloody long. Stupid crappy internet's. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you think it's good for what price they had? It, oh yeah! For the money that they had, it's really good. Considering it's got name actors in it, they've done a hell of a lot of what, with what they had. Like the visual effects aren't the best, but I'd put them at least on par with the '90s TV show. Which, considering it's sort of twenty odd years later, they're not the best visual effects around. But if you go back and watch the original version um, of Next Gen's visual effects. And you'll see that these aren't these are actually pretty good compared to that. Um, a lot of people don't realise that. Yes, the makeup was crappy in some parts. You can't get expert makeup artists for so little money. Like once you break down the movie and who's in it, like the actors and that, Tim Russ might have been five grand. Walter might have been five grand. Just just to be there. Yeah. So the, the, the actors alone will chew through it. Making the sets, does, and the visual effects would probably be at least half that budget. Oh, yeah. So, it's... Yeah. For what it was, it was really well, good. I really enjoyed it. Oh. I'll, I'll probably watch oh, yeah. it again. Uh, oh, definitely. Since, I, I hope... Since it's my I would like it to get... I would like it, because this is just a pilot, and I would like it to, like, get picked up and stuff, so... Ho hopefully they get something out of it. Yeah, and unfortunately, like, with get, all like, the negative reviews they're getting, that's definitely going to put a simmer on it. Um, yeah, and that that genuinely makes me sad. Um, we posted some details up on on the Facebook page. Let's have a really quick gander. Um, I should have had this open, but I totally forgot to. Just see what just see what the the Save Sci-Fi fan thought of it. Do, 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 do. Yes, Australian internet sucks. We know. We apologise. It's not <laughs> our fault. We didn't vote for him. And that's where we're leaving it. That's where we're leaving it. Um, where is it? Wow, it's actually back a lot further than I thought it was. Ah, oh, Galaxy Quest is getting a TV <laughs> show. Uh oh. Am I losing people? I'm getting static. Hello? But you're. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Ah. Uh, hello, hello, can you hear if me? If you're underwater. If you're underwater. What the hell just happened? I don't know. <laughs> you sound like you're underwater. Well, I was talking, and then all of a sudden, all I heard was a large amount of static. And I looked at Mixer, and it's like, your connection has been disconnected. We're trying to reconnect. So, yeah. Stuart, bring up the Facebook page for me, because apparently if I try and do anything while running this, it shits broken glass. <laughs> okay. I actually am on it, and I'm looking for it, sir. Yeah. So, see, yeah. Um, see what the, the Save Sci-Fi fans thought of it. Uh... Anyone in the oh, chat? Found... Anyone in the chat room watch it by any chance? No one said any. No one wrote any comments. Uh, I thought we would got some comments on one of them. I think we posted like three uh, times. I found the most recent, which is August twenty sixth, and there's nothing on that one. Keep going. It'll be there somewhere. Still, it's not very good at his job. We just why we don't pay him. <laughs> He's only he hasn't been thrown okay. out the airlock only because there's no scarecrow to catch him. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've got. I found one comment. Uh, um, from DJ Tatters said he watched it today. wasn't all wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yeah. I must have been reading comments from another page. Uh, I found another one. Uh, one says I want to see it. Uh, people, are, it's getting. It's, like I said, it's, it's getting positive reviews on our page. So yeah. Yeah. Well, 
Our page loves it. So, Renegades, if you're out there, we love it. We want to see more. We really do. And we're hoping you get a big enough budget to actually do your vision justice because we can see the raw potential in the story. It's a lot there. And I'd love to see sort of this rogue group um, mucking about at the edge of the Federation trying to work out who's trying to corrupt the system. So that'd be really cool to check out. So... Okay, anyway, let's move on to the season finales. Boy, oh boy, uh, having uh, quite a few shows finished this week. Oh, yeah. So I think we'll start with Humans, just because. Um, it's the it, one we don't care about. Yeah, pretty much. It's the <laughs> one we're going to... Like, Humans, to me, started off with a lot of potential. And it was all right for the first, what, two, maybe three episodes. And then it started to... Try. Try. Yeah, it 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 just didn't go well. I don't know what I don't know what happened. Like the writing side, granted, it was just it, it just felt like the writers just didn't care or, or just gave up on it. Yeah, it it felt like it should have been a mini series, like three or four episodes. It yeah, felt like it was three or four episodes stretched out to ten. So that and it, but it did raise a couple of really interesting questions about sentience and whether or not sort of humanoid robots deserve the same rights that people have if they're sentient. It did raise those points later on, but it took oh, so long to get there that you were half asleep and bored shitless by then. Okay, yeah. here's a question. Yep. But weren't they trying to make sure that the robots weren't sentient? Yeah, there was a group of um, robots that had sentience, that were given sentience by the person who helped create the original robots. Um, and one of them was his son that died, but didn't die because of freezing and unfreezing or something stupid. Anyway, um, there was, a, there was King Arthur was in it as a robot and he was from Merlin and he was wandering around and always broken. Eventually he died. Um, yeah. Was, was he the second one? Yeah. Uh, the very old model? Yeah, the very old model. Okay. Yeah. With short hair. Yeah, const- <laughs> constantly crashing, constantly sort of glitching and... Attacking people. Yeah, no, he, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he... Ta- no, he didn't attack people. The, the blonde-haired female one attacked people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she went a bit loopy. Yeah. Because she wasn't getting rescued. Yeah, can you blame her? She was effectively raped constantly. Day in, day yeah, out. they had five seconds. <laughs> then got hosed off. So, yeah. After. Which is pretty nasty. So, it's... It's like I said. It's very interesting to sort of see that point of view, uh, but it did feel like something that should have been a lot less than what it was. And we're sorry, yeah. humans. You, you, the potential was there, and it just didn't. So yeah, I would give it a solid five out of ten, maybe six, maybe six. The the ending. No, actually, no. I've revised that. The ending deserves a six. The way the series yeah, the ending was, yeah. lifts it to a six. Yeah, yeah so, ending was cool. End- really enjoyed the ending. Yeah. And if you if you watch the first like f- two episodes and the last two episodes and ignore the middle bit, you'll be fine. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing much. You're not missing much. <laughs> it's just it's people bitching at each other for what six episodes. So, um, moving on to our second favorite series, Killjoys. Yes, Killjoys. Killjoys was really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know what to make of it yet. Yeah, it's definitely one of those sort of shows. You're not not quite sure if um, exactly where it's going to go. The rack is an interesting co- uh, concept, and how everything's sort of controlled by corporations. That doesn't look like the world today at all. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and overall, I really enjoyed it. A lot of people have said to me that it has a very Firefly feel to it, and I just, I genuinely don't see it. Like, I could see the sort of us versus them type thing that it's got. But, yeah. And sort of the, these guys are sort of rogues on the outside of the law, like we can do whatever we want sort of thing, but to me, that's it doesn't feel like Firefly. So. No, I didn't get the Firefly feel either, so. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I uh, like. What are your thoughts on it overall, Stuart? Remember, we're still trying to be spoiler-free as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, said, I I don't know what to make of it yet. 
but I did, I definitely enjoyed it more than humans. I, I will give it that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's definitely a lot more tolerable than humans. Humans just, as I said, we saw this one, but just, just lost me. Yeah. Yeah, K- Killjoys is, I actually really enjoyed Killjoys. Um, there was, it was Killjoys and Dark Matter were the two series I was look, look forward to each week when they were, when they were oh, yeah. full rotation back to back. And they are Sci Fi Friday! Sci Fi Friday is back! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, Why not? So the, the death of Sci-Fi Fridays was the birth of Save Sci-Fi. So mission accomplished? Okay. Question mark. <laughs> that's it. It's if over, people. Case. We win. If, we're, we're if that's the case, then it means we have to change our name. Then drop the mic. <laughs> walk away. No, we've already rebranded. We're supporting the future of science fiction. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Anyway, um, I would love to see where Killjoys is going to go with the level six. And where they oh, yeah. go with the rack down the line, because mm. um, what they did with sort of the in the quad, which is sort of their little area of space, there was it's actually really impressive. It's definitely way off in the future, though. Terraforming moons and planets and all sorts of craziness. Oh yeah, it's just that was real. I I like that sort of stuff. So yeah, and the was... the rich families were sort of like royalty. For like the corporate families yeah. and stuff, and then they had bombs that targeted specific DNA, and yeah, it was... like it got really, it got really like it had its really cool parts. So, yeah, so I'd, I'd definitely give it a solid compared to humans. Humans is if humans is a six, Killjoys would be, at least be an eight, eight and a half. Yeah, it be has, happy with that. It has, it has its moments where it drags as well. Like there's a couple episodes where it's just sort of. You're like, why? Just why? What is the point of this? And there's a, <laughs> but for the most part, it's it's really good. Yeah, I, I can't. I agree with you. Just keeping a small free really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, so, welcome to the agree with the host podcast. If you don't agree with me, you go out the airlock. <laughs> Ultimate control. Eh, that doesn't work for me. Shush you. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, I said, if we, if we ever do that to Amy, we're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. Amy doesn't get airlocked. That is the rule. Never. Yeah. yeah. She's like a human form replicator. You try and throw her out the airlock, she turns into a thin film and then comes at you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> so. Okay, continuing the spoiler-free reviews, we'll get back to the, the detailed reviews of... Killjoys after we do this one, just so that the ones who don't want to see spoilers can switch off after we've done it. So, now, Dark Matter. Oh my god, I love Dark Matter. It's just, uh, I, I really, 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 really love Dark Matter. I didn't want it to end. I know, I know <laughs> just more episodes. Yeah, did you see how I just sort of was quiet for a minute and let him fangirl all over it? <laughs> Uh, so dark matter dark matter is a um it's a it's based on a on the sh- i can't remember what the ship's called raza it the raza yeah the, the raza the raza <laughs> it's such an original name for a ship almost, almost sounds like an aussie thing no, 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 hey no. raza get over here no, what, what it sounds like <laughs> is they were playing scrabble and they were the pieces left <laughs> pretty much yeah, but ship yeah basically name, um done <laughs> Yeah, basically the first episode is all, all they're all in um, stasis, and then the power goes, and they just all wake up and they can't remember anything. Yeah, and it just it get it gets so good from there. Yeah, it, gets, it just gets better and better. Um, see the the it's yeah. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed Dark Matter. Dark Matter was definitely the series each week that I was keeping an eye out for oh my god so. oh goodness yes yes yeah. yes yes i i i could just, i just hope it's a, like just keep it going for as long as it possibly can yeah what 10 years yeah well it, it, it could it could it, well i don't actually think it has the potential to challenge stargate for the for that title but um because stargate at least keep, Star- it could definitely do five to six seasons easily yeah um depending on what direction they want to take it um hmm. It's... Well, judging by that finale, it's gonna, judging by that finale, it's going to be amazing next season. Oh yeah. So, um, overall, I would definitely give it a 
Oh, it definitely gets a nine. Oh, it definitely gets a nine. I was going to say nine, nine and a half, but yeah, nine, definitely a nine. Yeah, um, it's it, just like... It too has its moments where it sort of lulls off a bit. But a bit, yeah. There's sort of there's enough, fewer, there's so much there yeah, there's, there's, to make it. There's sort of fewer and further between it. Yeah. Um, it especially, the, especially the guests that they have on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, D- David Hewlett, Tori Higginson, Will Wheaton. Yeah. Three big people there. Yeah. Okay, two and a half. Will's not that big. But then, again, <laughs> then again, you think of who the director was. <laughs> yeah. Yes, as I said, it was done by the guys who did Stargate, so... Exactly. That's... I was being a man tapping, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> that too. That too. She's directing quite a bit of Stargate. But yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Let me think for a second. Dark Matter, to me, felt more Firefly-y in the level that they were people that were on their own, for the most part, had to sort of deal with their own sort of shortcomings and use each other's ability, sort of stereotypes to overcome the rest. If I gave Dark Matter a failing, it's everyone with stupendously stereotyped characters. Uh, yeah. You you had the the computer geek um, girl. Yep. You had you had the tough the uh, oh the who the who acts tough but is actually the soft actually a softy guy. Yep. Which is hilarious because I I so love that. You got your token black guy, your token Asian, Check. and the Asian is good with swords. Yeah, <laughs> very good with swords. Terrifyingly good with swords. Check. Yeah. You got the white guy that loves guns. Check. Check. And you've got the captain that is not sure of herself. Check. And you've got and, oh, the... and don't forget the ships, the ship, the ships android. Yeah, that's exactly. And then you've got the not sexy. Uh, as what this way, the, one of the guys at work described the android as a not sexy seven of nine with no idea <laughs> what the hell she's doing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, one way of putting it. Um, but yeah, yeah, the innocent girl. We did her first. She was the innocent girl who's tech savvy. Um, yeah, yeah, she's yeah, she, she's the computer geek. Yeah. So she's effectively she's effectively River Tam. Um, the captain is effectively female Mal. The android is uh, not, not not sexy seven of nine. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> um, the crazy gun guy is Jane. He goes as far as naming his own guns. So yeah, even that alone. Yeah. The Asian is just every stereotypical Asian you could think of in the past 20 years. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, I think that... Oh, and the, the guy... Oh, and the token black guy. The, to- the token black guy, who is sort of the conscience to a point. He's he's like the father of the group. Yeah, effectively. Um, <laughs> or so you think. It, it, oh, shut up. No spoilers. Um, fool. He's totally ruined it for everybody. Anyway, um, so the, the, the innocent girl so, um, almost immediately clings on to... So she, she's five. So five is the innocent girl. She almost immediately clings oh, yeah. to the... Yeah, we should mention the that, they're, that they're named after numbers of order of when they woke up. Yeah, because they didn't actually know their names until later on. And since they reject their original identities, they just sort of kept the numbers. So five yeah. immediately clings on to two. Um, being the the female sort of ship's captain lead and the only other female on the ship, and she definitely looks up to the, the, what number was the token black guy three? No, he was six. He was six. He was six. Yeah. yeah, he was six. He's six. Yeah, no, captain is captain is two. Uh, white guy is one. Yeah. Uh, crazy gun guy is three. three. Asian is four, and she, and she is five. Yeah. So um. Yes, the five definitely acts to sort of for a lot of the series. She's trying to be like the others. She's trying to be sort of big and tough because she feels like in battle scenarios she doesn't really contribute anything. All of the others are trying to be like her, which is sort of ironic and hilarious at the same time. Um, well, some of the others are trying to be like her, sort of dial it down a little. And there's many a shenanigan that goes on. Like, we have space zombies, which is sort of a bit boring. Oh, don't get started on the mining colony. Yeah, the mining colony. But yeah, it's... 
And there's a lot of sort of behind the scenes political drama between the corporations. And corporations are effectively like countries are now. They're sort of the, the big powerhouses are corporations. You yeah. don't fuck with the corps. And <laughs> which they seem to do a lot. Oh yeah, they they spend the almost the entire first season messing with the corpse. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, but what yeah, do you like, expect? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really, like, moving along, like, as I said, really solid, good show. If you want to, you want to, or get a show into someone who, who loves Star Trek, what make them watch Dark, Dark Matter. Yeah, exactly. You want a space sci-fi which takes place on a ship, you've got friends that like Firefly, show them Dark Matter. That oh, yeah. Look. Dark Matter isn't as good as Firefly, but I also think Firefly is overrated. So I should say... Dark Matter isn't as good as people think Firefly is. Um, <laughs> that's a better way of putting it. Careful now, don't want to piss off the brown coats. Oh, screw the brown coats. I don't know what they're bloody talking about. Stargate's better. <laughs> and I'm not dead yet, so that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hey, saying I'm, a word. I'm Star Wars. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not Stargate. I'm Star Wars, and that's a fork was here. We'd probably kill you. <laughs> Dragon just commented in the chat. Throws Firefly into trash. Oh see, no! See, I wouldn't that throw my I wouldn't throw my Firefly into the trash because it's signed by effectively everyone on the cast. Yeah. So there's. That. Yeah, I'm actually gonna get, I'm gonna get Tim Rose to sign my Return of the Jedi. Yeah, he's he's signing my Blu-ray set book. So yeah. yeah. I mean, I could just get him to sign the lightsaber, but. <laughs> nah, what fun it's is not, that? It's not the same. Nah. Because <laughs> they're not going to be using them, nah. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm tempted to get David Hewlett to sign my tablet, but at the same time, I don't want him to sign my tablet because I'm yeah. I'm replacing parts on it. The last thing I want to do is have to replace the part with his signature. I'd be like, no, no, no. So I might get him to sign the case, the bag thing. Oh yeah, that would be good. That, that, that would work. So you're going to have it with you when you oh, go and get your photo? Fuck yeah. And I th- um, okay, so we, just in case those who aren't following, we're now talking about Oz Comic Con in a couple of weeks and how excited <laughs> we are. Um, oh, God. So, yeah, so uh, I thought of the greatest photo ever for, for, for um, Taylor because uh, Rachel's going to be there. Rachel Luffer? Luffer? Sothry? Something like that. Whatever the hell the name is. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Rachel, yeah. Rachel's going to be there. And um, I'm going to be in my McKay cosplay, and on my tablet, I'm going to load up the This is Taylor, find her picture. <laughs> and I'm going to have her hold it, and we're both going to point at it. Found her. <laughs> I thought of that at work the other day. I was like, whoa, I've got to do this. Yeah. I definitely. I don't know if I can, if I could if if will do it, but I'd love to get a recording of Tim Rose and me both going. It's a trap. It's a trap. Get... I'd love to. Or at least just him doing it. I'd love to get one of them on the podcast. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be awesome. I'm going to try and if David Hewlett's quiet enough, which he probably won't be, I'm going to try and have a little bit of a chat to him. So... <laughs> I don't think any of them are going to be quiet. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Like it's almost as said. If you look at the past 20 years, almost every single major fan base is represented. Yeah, which is terrifying. In convention. Come on, we've <laughs> ended up with Leo for some weird reason. Yeah, that's that's more random than anything else, but yeah, it's going to be good. Well, he well, charmed his pop culture, so... Exactly. Yeah, I know, it, but still... And do, do we, do we accept... We ex- I, ooh, I just thought of something hilarious. Mm-hmm. Get a photo Uh-oh. with Crowley and the angel from Charmed, where Crowley's stabbing him with my angel blade. <laughs> No, no, Johnny will kill you. Come on, you got to admit that'd be the greatest. Yeah, it'd be hilarious. Yeah. That'd be the, one of the greatest photos in the history of Oz Comic Con. <laughs> and then I come up behind Crowley and stab him with my lightsaber. <laughs> well, I... yeah, but that means we'd actually. Oh, I will talk to you after the podcast. Yeah, and uh, yes, yes, Townsville is getting that. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited for ta- for that actually. Yeah, yeah. Townsville. Uh, for those who aren't monitoring the chat. Um, Townsville is getting its own Comic Con. Look up Townsville Comic Con on Facebook. It's looking like it's going to be really cool. Um, oh, it's I'm not... so happy that the North is getting a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's not going to be um, sort of Oz Comic Con level. It's probably not going to have much in the way of celebrities, but it's definitely having comic book artists 
and all the sort of stuff. It's it's very young. It's very little. And uh, it's Hex and Barjo. Yes, Hex and, Hex and Barjo from Good Game. Yeah. Ooh, I would like to meet. Good them. Game is a show on ABC oh, Three yes. where they review or is, where they review video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it took took me a second for my brain because there's a, there's a shop here called Good Games and they sell cards and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Hex and Barjo. So. Yeah, that I was like pretty awesome. Uh, nice. uh, like I said, love that the North is getting a love, love again. Yeah, exactly. And Townsville deserves it. I'm depending on when it is. I might even do a trip up there for it. Why not? Oh yeah, uh, uh, let me actually let me, let me see. Uh, yeah, news guy, do the news for a change. <laughs> we'll worry about it later. No, no, not the news. News the. No, no, no. No. Find out no, more no. information. Is it, that's a um, Magneticon, Townsville Pop Culture event? Is that it? Uh, no, it's called Townsville Comic Con. Oh, there's another one happening next year in Townsville. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, that one's in... That, okay, well, that one's in July. <laughs> Comic Con. Oh, there it is. Do it later. Uh, yeah, I can't find a date or anything. Yeah, I don't think they've announced a date yet. No, there's an Indiegogo up for it, though. Nice. Let's have a look at where the Indiegogo, at the, um, Indiegogo is at. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, our one and only oh. Dragon well, is having a quick look. Well, it's funded. Yeah, of course it's bloody <laughs> the, funded. The goal, the goal was 5,000. Yep. It's at 6,800. Very nice. And there's still 20 days left of funding. Nice. So I should price up doing a Comic Con down in Port Macquarie and then do that. So yeah, uh, a couple of call it the Safe oh, Sci-Fi oh, Comic Con. Oh, here we go. I have a date for it, twenty third of April. Ah, that's way, too way too close to Supernova. Yeah, can... yeah. Ouch. What is it with having the, the sort of that the oh, April okay. and then the September uh, times? Gold, uh, Gold Coast Supernova next year for April is eighth to the tenth. Yeah, it's not that close. We could actually do that. I could. If I have the time, the annual leave up, which I probably won't. And if I have the money, which I probably won't. I know, Sorry, I'll do an Indiegogo good. for my trip up there. Haha. -ha. My plan is coming together. Are you oh, sure about that? Oh, we should, we should pull this together for this. For $500, you, you get, um, is commercial sponsorship. This perk includes full sponsorship of Townsville Comic Con by your business. Your logo will appear on all advertising material. Oh, yeah, we, sh we, sh we should. We should jump on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will appear on all advertising materials, a link to your website. So, like, a uh, Facebook page, obviously. Oh. oh, no, we have a website, don't we? Yeah, it's safesci-fi.com. It's where all yeah. of the yeah. iTunes stuff goes. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it's just fun how we're working this stuff out live on the air. It's, 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 not, like, <laughs> it's not like we're doing a live radio show at all. <laughs> <laughs> don't check the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, our, all our stuff will be on there, so yeah. we should definitely jump on that. Yeah. There, um, there is, there's only three of those, so... Right, well, send us the, the link over Facebook, and I'll run it past the others. Mind you, I don't exactly know where we're going to pull 500 bucks, but that's, a, that's another issue. Okay, worry about it later. Yeah, worry about it later. I've got to save up 1,200 bucks as it is for Oz Comic Con. There yeah. is so much stuff at Oz Comic Con. Oh my gosh. Okay, next part. But it's Oz Comic Con. Shall we go through play the... that next? <laughs> is there any... Well, we've, we've scored. Should we do spoilers now for um everything? Yes. Uh, spoiler alert, this is my Oz Comic Con list. David Hewlett. Photo times one. Photo times no, one. No, I meant for like Killjoy and the others. Ah, oh, oh, But I want to talk about all the photos I'm getting. <laughs> later. Okay. I'll do it later. Um, yes. So, Killjoy spoilers. Wow, that ending. Just saying. Yeah, that, was, that ending was crazy. Was not expecting it at all. No. But I love um I love that it's getting a good um reaction. Yeah, exactly. So why don't you do a Cliff Notes version of the ending? And this has spoilers, so you are fairly warned. If you don't want spoilers for Killjoys or Dark Matter, now is your chance to turn it off. Even though that somebody put partially spoiled one of them earlier. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, Killjoy's ending. You go first. Oh, God, now I'm going to think about it. Um, uh, why did I not write down Cliff notes while I was watching it? That would have been so smart. I'm going to airlock myself for that. <laughs> yes, yes, he, he he's, and he's gone. Good, goodbye, Stuart. Don't come back. Um, oh, oops. oops. <laughs> Damn, auto beam in. Stupid, stupid safety measures and they're beaming people in from outside of the ship. How dare they? Oh, please, I just use it as a transmission. Bloody. Yeah, boring. Um, let's see. Now, the finale on um, Killjoys has them face off against. Um, I forgot his name. He's a level six, effectively. Yeah. And they face off against that, and the city they're in gets absolutely wrecked. Um, and then something else happens, and my brain is drawing a complete blank. Yeah, I know. I was like, my, my brain just died. I know there's an ending, but my brain's like, no, you don't spoil for other people. Let them watch it. <laughs> I can t- I can cover everything with um with dark matter because I because I rewatched it rewatched the last episode today. So. <laughs> Okay, fine. Let's let's move on to dark matter then. So, Kill, oh. Killjoy's finale is so good we both somehow managed to forget it. Forget it. Yeah. Hashtag that happened. So moving along to dark matter, and dark matter really took a really awesome twist towards the end of it. Yeah, and this is why my brain has deleted the Kill Killjoy's finale because, because the- I, I watched this after it, and this was so spectacular. Oh, the way the setup for it was so good. So the setup uh, setup to the finale is that two is I wouldn't say capture uh, captured. I'd say no. I say captured. I say captured. No. On on um on her I guess home planet, which because she finds out that she is genetically created. Yes, yeah, she'd been. She's effectively a uh, um a manufactured human. Yeah. Um, so artificially grown, pretty much everything about her has been enhanced exponentially. Um, yeah, she's got and she's got nanos in her. Yeah, she's got nanites in her that sort of uh, control all of her inner functions and make sure that she doesn't. Die. <laughs> this, sounds, this, this sounds like a TV show I once watched. Yeah, <laughs> see that, generator Rex, anyone? Yeah, the only reason I, the only issue I see with her at this point is she's very overpowered. So. Oh yeah. Because she's damn near unkillable. Yeah, but yeah, basically, um, she, um, they, there's a job they get, um, they find her planet, they leave her there. <laughs> Gen- Generation Rex, Rex is cool. Um, and then the crew find a way to bring her back. Yeah, they break her out, they bring her back to the ship, and then five remembers and- a recording device that was left in the cafeteria area. Yeah, which she spends the next half episode. Trying to decipher. Accessing and eventually gets a hold of, listens to the audio, and she's... Then the android gets attacked. Yeah, then the android gets randomly attacked and taken out. So then they're trying to find her, find out who the mole is on the ship. Yeah, so they all think there's a, a different extra person on board. They go hunting through the ship. They can't work out who it is, and then... Um, they think it's her? They think it's... They think, well, no, it's not they, 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 they pass the blame around a lot. Yeah. A lot. Uh, from person to it's person. The first, yeah, it's the person you don't expect. Yeah. And it's effectively the, the exact opposite of the first episode, where almost exactly the same crap happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except this time they're all getting taken out instead of waking up. Exactly. And so the second the second person to fall, fall is the um, Asian guy. No, it's not the droid. Yeah. So the Asian guy gets drugged and passes out. It's a neurotoxin. Neurotoxin. And he's put in a fairly deep coma. And everyone's like, what the hell? Again, more crazy blame each other sort of stuff. And eventually it reaches the point where they sort of go their own way. Um, One suspects three. Three suspects one. Two is off doing her own thing. Um, And five asks six to sort of go with her to her room so that she feels safe. Because she only feels safe around him. Um, yeah. At this point, and the reason she only feels safe about him is she's deciphered the recording, and the recording is of the Asian guy and the captain chick. So, so what's, what, I'm sorry, 
the two and four. Two and four. The number name thing just. Just yeah, this is a little annoying. It breaks I, my brain. It really does. That, that's the only thing I kind of wish it would change. Yeah. The, the number thing breaks my brain. Anyway, um, so find that on the recording, two and four are talking about taking him out. Now, at this point, we know that one isn't who he appears to be. And yeah. he's actually on the ship to take out three originally before he got his memory wiped. The memory wipe was written by six... For they're not exactly sure why, but they know that it was fairly crude and didn't work according to plan. The, the, it was yeah. meant to probably just wipe their short-term memory to try and keep the crew together, but accidentally wiped all of their memories. Yeah, what, what everything. So, um... Te- oops. <laughs> That'd be like me doing a program. I'd probably kill everything. Yeah, talk, talk about backfiring spectacularly. Anyway... Um, so they all point the finger to each other, and then they get gassed. And then um, six gets up and walks out of the out of five's room because he heard something. Disappears down the hallway and gets taken out. Stabbed by he, he was injected by stun stick. No, no, it was not the stun the no, stun stick. No, no, no. He was in. Oh yeah, no, he injected him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He, he'd been injected by the neurotoxin, so he's out cold. And they take him to the infirmary and put him in there, and then. Everyone gets even more insane. They're like, who would he trust to them to get this close in order to inject him? And they effectively start blaming Six because she's the only one left that he sort of trusted to sort of hang around. And then um, they're all pointing his fingers at each other, running around the ship trying to sort of sort out what the hell's going on. And then gas! And then they get locked in an area and gas canisters get thrown in. They all get knocked out. And right at the very end, the last closing shot, we get to see who the traitor really is. And we're not going to tell you who it is. Because you're gonna have to watch it. <laughs> so, Aww. yeah. Needless to say, I picked it about three quarters of the way through when a certain event happened. That I'm that, again, I don't want to go into details because I don't want to ruin it. Um, yeah. And, I. Yep. I. I didn't pick it. I for some thought. I thought for some bizarre reason. I thought it was the program that Android created, and somehow it took over. Yeah. Um. That could have been a thing. That's actually an interesting sort of idea. The the program the Android created was deleted though, so sort of ruled. No, that yeah, out no, no. I, I, before, no, I'm just saying. Like, before is deleted. I'm just saying it, it would make yeah. it would make sense. But I'm um, like, because it just looks like, because she was in red. I'm thinking evil personality. Yeah. Oh no. That's all I'm she's a red shirt, and she's the only one that dies. <laughs> I mean, you could consider deleting one's own program dying. But yeah, no. But until not? I until I deleted it up, I thought it was I thought it was the like the evil android trying to take over because the um the uh, the emotional stability of android was damaged. Yeah, and, and I thought it was, and I thought it was the program somehow managed to get access. To everything was taking over. Yeah, and was trying to somehow sort of wipe, reclaim somehow control. Wipe, yeah, and somehow wiping them out and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so they're not killed; they're just knocked out. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, no, they're not dead. They're, they're not alcohol. dead. Alcohol. Yeah. 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 So the the Brazza is in the hands have, of the um. It's VR. I can't remember what the VR is called. Yeah, the 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 sort of the Republic Special Forces Police. So the military. The military police, effectively. Yeah. I've, I've arrested them all, and at the end of the episode, they're carrying all of their knocked out bodies off the ship, except for the <laughs> the one person who was the traitor. Who again, we're not going to mention, but. It, because he wasn't knocked out. So, yeah. So they weren't knocked out. Exactly. So he was one of the people that wasn't knocked out. Yeah. So. Let's drag bodies to drag out. So, yeah. No, no, the, the, the military police stormed the ship and dragged them out. Yeah, no, they, they were getting, tr- they were getting tr- um, tracked. Yeah. So, yeah, they were, they were Cause, up. Because they, they, um, they all have bounties on them. Oh, yeah. Except for the chick. Bounties, bounties everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What well, I say? One, one's a terrorist. One's accused of murdering the de- their father. <laughs> one is uh, pretending to be one that did lots of bad things, and instead is on the ship to get revenge for killing his family, else. getting killed. Yeah, yeah, and eventually decides that it's decides against it. Mostly decides against it. <laughs> yeah, ba- basically, everyone, no one wants to kill them, and they just, everyone just wants the bounty on them. Yeah, pretty much. Wants to catch him and not kill him. Yeah. So, yeah. And I guess if you've got a bounty on your head, the best way to get rid of that bounty is to hand in people that have way more bounty and say, look, done my fair share. 
Handed them in. That's the deal. You get rid of my bounty. Done. Done. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, as I said, really, really enjoyed that finale. Oh, yeah. So I'll get around to watching in the next couple of days. Oh, you should. And then you can oh, yeah, tell it's... us what you think next week. Yeah. I'm watching yeah. Criminal Minds at the moment. Yeah. So next week we'll definitely cover the Falling Skies finale, which, according to Michael, was spectacular. I'm going to try and get him on because he really, really liked it. Um, I actually have really enjoyed Falling Skies so. as well. So, so we'll, probably do a, we'll probably do a gone. full season review from yeah. start to I, I finish next week. I am sad it's so. gone. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, Full and Skies was good. Um, it was one of those shows that had really good potential and then had no idea where the hell it was going. Yeah. And eventually sort of they just sort of fudged their way to the end. But yeah, it, at least it had a decent ending. So... Who's mm. yawning... Sorry, that's me. Out the airlock. Oh, oh, Bye. I was about to say Hawk's yawning as well. <laughs> Hawk's not on. <laughs> he, he is on Facebook. So, why is he in? The, why isn't he joining us? Uh, he just got off the train heading home. Oh, that's boring. <laughs> so. I thought he said he was going to try to get here on time. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah, he sucks. Um. Anyway. Let's go back to Oz Comic Con. No, I was going to say, <laughs> do it. Time to do the news. <laughs> yeah, back to Oz Comic Con for the news, because we have more guests that were announced over the past week. Uh, oh, brother. Oz Comic Con, you're killing me. We love you, we really do, but there's only so you're many guests You're killing my hip pocket. Take. Well, I've, a majority of them were cosplay were cosplay guests, so it won't cost money. Well, thank but, crap. Yeah. Um, I'll go for the most recent one, which is today, which is Clive Standen. His role in Vikings has also been... He was also uh, Gawain in Camelot, and he's also been in Doctor Who. Haven't we already seen him before? Mm, uh, maybe, I'm not sure. It's Supernova. Possibly. <laughs> my mind... I don't know what my mind's telling me. We've seen so many. Yeah, um... Uh, the exhibitor list. So all the all the people who are going to have. Um, who was he in uh, Doctor Who? Uh, who was he? In, he was. I had a look at this. He was a private. Oh, so no one important. Oh no, no, he has a name. He actually has a name in it. Oh, he's got a name character in it. Oh, that's that's. Yeah, uh, Pri Private Harris. He was in Turn Left and po um, it was in Turn Left, Poison Sky, and the Santaran um, stratagem. Ah, so he was one of the unit guys. Yes, it was a unit soldier. Ah. But he actually has a name in this other than unit soldier, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he was Gawain in Camelot and then Rollo in Vikings, which is his most recent um, role. Yeah. If yeah. Vikings was sci fi, we'd so cover that. But it's not, so haha. Yeah. Uh, as I said, uh, Exhibitors List came out. Yep. So all the people who are going to have, um, um, like, uh, booths and panels and, uh, and stuff came um, came out. So a couple of a couple of one I already knew was going to be there, which was Game Trailer's Jam side because I know the manager and I talk to him a lot. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so I knew that one was coming a while ago. Zomster is is not coming. Not coming. That's yeah. No. Nice. Zomster. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of makes me sad. It wasn't worth it. Yeah, I know. I, I talked to him about it, but I got a sneaking suspicion they're watching this. Guest list going, it would have been worth it! No, they're going, they want to go and sit, come and just be as guests as. Yeah, well, I guess that makes sense. After you've done so many cons every now and again, you do want to just be a guest. Yeah, um, Terry Dowling, who's been there, um, moving back to guests. Uh, Terry Dowling is coming. He's um, Australia's uh, greatest uh, writer of horror for this year. So he's he's like, a, he'll be an artist alley with that, thanks to um, Gestalt Comics. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, moving on to a couple of dwarfs. Oh, yes. The Hobbit dwarfs. The Hobbit dwarfs. Stephen Hunter and Jed Brophy. Yeah. Neither of which I have anything for them to sign. Thank fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving back on to um, cosplay. Uh, moving on to cosplay guests. Uh, one of these, I actually, uh, one of them are actually good friends of mine, which is Carl Palmley. He's actually a really good friend of mine, and he hid it from me. You. Bugger, I'm gonna kill him. I was coming come for that. <laughs> and um, and um, Isabella McShane as well. Nice. She, uh, she is Shiva cosplay. Nice. Have to try and get some of them on the podcast. 
Uh, maybe. Is there any other... Oh, yeah. Uh, more guests that were announced. Uh, Dan Ewing and Tim Pocock. Dan Ewing was the Black Ranger and Power Rangers RPM. Nice. Hawks happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Tim Pocock... Uh, what was he in that I remember I covered? That was sci-fi related. God damn it. I know I had a look at this. <laughs> Ah. Once again, Stuart fails the podcast. It's, it's Scott, it was Scott Summers and X One Origins Wolverine. Ah, okay. very nice. The shitty one that no one likes because of what they did to Deadpool. Pretty much, yeah. From the studio that inexplicably sewed his mouth closed last I time. I think that's all the guests. Yep, that's all for the now. guests yeah. for this week. Yeah. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so my list of signatures are photo and photo with David Hewlett. Signature times seven. Not joking. That's not a mistake. Signature of what? Uh, a photo... The, the photo signed. The Blu-ray cover signed. The cards that come with the Stargate Atlantis Blu-ray signed. My Dr. McKay figure signed. My Stargate HD1 DVD for the guest spots on it. Because I've got two seasons which I get signed by for guest spots. Signed. My Planet of the Apes head signed. And my tablet from Stargate Atlantis signed. Well, case you've decided not to yeah, the case. I, I, I'll work that out when I get there. Um, <laughs> then we've got Jim Beaver from Supernatural. I have a photo with him stabbing me with the angel blade, or me stabbing him with the angel blade. Haven't quite decided how that's going to work. Um, and if only you could get Leo doing it. That signed. Oh, that would be great. No, no, no. Leo has to be stabbed by Mark Shepard. No offense, <laughs> lads. <laughs> Uh, I said we're we're still a few weeks out from this, I know. so if if we it's like every week there's just more guests. Yeah, and I'm a little bit worried about David Hewlett to be honest, because he's how so he's posting up lots of statuses and stuff, and I've been talking to him, and he's working currently working on a film project. Oh, so I'm not quite sure if he might bail at the eleventh hour as a result of that. I'm really hoping he doesn't. I really am, but he might. And if he does, that means I don't have to save twelve hundred dollars. So what literally is he half, working? Literally, literally half my budget becomes free. What this is the thing he's working called incorporated, or is it something else? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it's on his IMDb. He's playing Chad. Yeah. So. So yeah, there's that. Um, what else have I got? Rachel Luffle. I'm gonna get. She's got a photo with her in my McKay gear with my tablet that says, because um, I've got to keep the graphics from the show on my tablet, it's just going to say, this is Taylor, find her, and I'm going to point at it, and she's going to point at her or something like that, and going to sort of play off that. Should be really funny, hopefully. Uh, Mark Shepard, going to get him um, stabbing me with the angel blade, obviously. I haven't quite decided. I'm definitely going to get him to sign my Firefly, because why not? Oh yeah, and I don't know about anything else about that. Yeah, I'm still. I know so, I definitely am getting a, a photo with Tim Rose because I've got I got um I got me and Jody um platinum passes. Nice. I didn't actually realize this, but plenty of people get their own VIP lounge. Yeah. I was like, ooh, ooh, goody, goody, goody. So yeah, so um, and I'm I'm getting my Blu-ray book signed by Tim Rose. Um, Time for the end of the podcast. And Chris, and yeah, I'll be just. Just this, as I said, this 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 com- oh, comic oh, yeah. that list is ridiculously, insanely awesome. Oh yeah, I feel I don't very know, broke. I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all the Q and A's. Oh Good well, God. no, uh, I think we're going to have to divide and conquer the Q and A's. Um, I'll definitely co- I'll definitely be covering Tim's. I'll <laughs> definitely be covering David's. I'll probably cover um. Okay, um, we'll work out this after. Nah, yeah, we don't really have to. So, yeah. anyway, that, that's only part of my signatures, so it's took a lots and lots of stuff. I'm going to have to juggle so much crap. Yeah. I'm also going to be taking uh, photos of people in what, cosplay, what, uh, posting them up on what, the Facebook page. Yeah. It's going to be One insane. quick thing with Star Wars before we um, head off. Uh, this Friday is Force Friday, which is when the first um, um, bunch of Star Wars The Force Awakens toys get released worldwide, so you can order them, including a remote-controlled BB-8, which I am most certainly going to buy. <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely look forward to that. Anyway, um, so I may bring, I may have a soccer ball droid at Com- Os Comic Con. So anyway, as always, keep an eye on the Facebook page, facebookcom sci fi and for all our news and updates, we're still voting on the Ultimate uh, Ship. We sorry, Ultimate Fleet. 
We are up to doing the Cruiser, which is looking like it's going to be a really impressive fleet. Keep it on uh, SaveSciFi.com, as that's where the podcasts go. Podcasts are also available on iTunes and uh, Stitcher. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Bye. Bye, all. Ah. 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 Ah.